Hey guys, how's it going? This is Helpful Lockpicker here, and welcome back to this week's Locksport update. This is a very fun video series that I like to try to run every single Saturday. It's a really good series that you can do to be able to share any updates of your own or any updates of my own. Sometimes I'm not able to put it out on Saturday, like we're doing today on Sunday, but it is something I like to try to do every week. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that was able to make it in this week. This is such a fun thing to do and I just hope everyone's having a great weekend. So the first thing I'd like to do is let's just check out and see who's able to make it into the chat today. It's good to see Dana Reed, Dr. Virus 12, Roy R. Roy R. And we'll see if anyone else pops in. This is one of my off days so not everyone is probably going to make it that they normally would. But I just want to say thank you to everyone that was able to make it in today. So the first thing I'd like to start off is by going over the really exciting 50,000 subscriber giveaway that I did. And I just want to announce that Brummy was able to share that he got my lock that I sent him, which is pretty exciting. Um, Rusty Jo 2 thank you for stopping in as well. So what I'm going to do is let's bring up Brummy's channel so we can see his video where he shows the lock that he able to win from my 50,000 subscriber giveaway and also you can see something really cool that he did. So I'm going to bring up his channel in front right here so you can check him out. So what we have in front of us right here is going to be Brummy's YouTube page and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at his most recent video which you can see right here number 258. As you can tell Brummy has a good amount of subscribers at 1.2k he has a lot of interesting videos. I just want to say thank you again for entering in my giveaway, and I really hope you enjoy this really cool brass lock in your collection. So let's take a quick look at his video right now. So I'm going to load that up for you. So now I'm not going to pick any uh, locks. I'm just going to tell you how I made a DD pick out of a Nabus 6540. But before we do that, I just want to say a big thank you to a couple of people. First one being the helpful lock picker, because I've just received this. I want it in one of his giveaways. It's absolutely beautiful. It's an all brass Abus 83 CS slash 45 series one. And it's absolutely gorgeous. He knows I collect brass locks. And I mentioned that in the uh, entry to his giveaway video, and I'm so glad I won it. I've not had a go at picking it yet. It's got one of those keyways, which has got the sidebar on it, which I don't know nothing about. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on it, but it's a beautiful lock. So I just want to say a big, massive thank you to the Alpha Lock Picker for that. Thank you very much. Secondly, I had another couple of locks sent to me off the Irish Lock Picker. Two lovely locks. This first one is a matte lock, 1209, beautiful lock. And then the second one is an American 1300 series. I've got a couple of 1100s, but I've not got a 1300. So this is an American 13. All right, so I'm gonna to try to skip ahead a little bit on his video. I just wanna show you the, the pretty cool tool he made, which you can see right here if the preview. Just look at this really cool disc detainer tool he made out of an Abus lock. What I was actually trying to do was remove the pins. This is really cool. And pin it and put a key in for it. But <laughs> that went pear shaped and I butchered it. So I decided to do something with the body and this is what I've come up with. So, we're... so if you want to see more on that really cool design, what you can do is go to his channel and I will Put a link to that in the video description so you can check him out. I want to say that that's a really cool thing. I want to say, Brummy, thank you for doing some cool things in Locksport. I just want to say big congratulations to you on winning my giveaway. So for this week, what I might do is I am going to just maybe share a few channels at random, unless anyone has any channels that they would like to share. But I just want to say thank you to all the newcomers that have joined this week's Locksport Update. Matthew Coda, um, Lockmania, thanks for making it in, Brian Field, and the mysterious Fu Lin Yu. I want to say that this is a good group, and it'll be pretty cool to check out some channels. 
So what I'm going to do, what I like to typically do, is I'll bring up a random number generator, and I'll bring that up for you right here. And what I have on this generator is just going to be off my master list, where we'll have the, the channels labeled in numeric order, and then we'll be able to select a channel to share, unless anyone has anything specific. But here's an example of the master list right here. So what I'm going to do is let's bring up that generator one more time and let's see what we can actually generate. So I'm going to head over and hit generate and we're going to see. So number 313. So now that we have selected a number, let's see what number 313 is going to actually be on our master list. So we're going to pop on over to 313 and let's just give this a good scroll and then we'll see what we're able to find. So scrolling on our way down here. Almost there, let's see. 313 is going to be right here. Oh, Tumblr. Tumblr's actually a pretty cool one to share. I don't know if you know him. He's been in Locksport for well over 20 years. He is a an extremely skilled picker but he really makes YouTube videos just for fun. So he does not really spend much time um, trying to crank out YouTube videos consistently. He's always focused on doing it for the fun aspect and I think that is a really great approach and so he hasn't been as active as you might hope with his really cool skill set and his creativity However, he is still a really cool channel to watch if you haven't seen him before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring up his channel and we can check him out. So let me bring him up for you in just a second so we can all see him together. So let's see, we have Tumblr, which will be coming up on your screen in just a second. All right, so here he is. So just taking a look at his channel, you can see that it's a pretty cool design. And he has about 3.79k subscribers. In my honest opinion, he deserves a lot more than this. But it does play into the fact that he doesn't make these videos all that frequently. As you can see, his last video was two years ago. But just scrolling through, you can see of all the really great high security locks he has picked, he is a really great resource to anyone that has any really great questions, a very knowledgeable guy. But what we can do is let's just play his most recent video from two years ago and then we'll be able to get a really cool clip of what his channel is like. So I'm gonna play that for you right now. So let's open up this Abloy Classic pick. I know, I know, I know, I owe you an explanation. We're gonna get to that. But first, let's talk about this Abloy pick and my friend Hux who made it for me. So you can be pretty sure that like when Abloy executives go talk to their therapist, Huxley picks the guy they're talking to him about. So he calls this the silver bullet. It's a universal disc detainer pick, but certainly geared towards Abloy locks. The engraving on the uh, picking spindle corresponds to the disc position, while the engraving on the well, tensioning spindle corresponds to the disc number. On the disc manipulation tip, you can see just how thin that metal has to be in order to slip between the discs. Anyhow, the R&D and just creative mind that went into making this tool and to attacking alloys really uh, represents years of Hux's work. and. Um, I feel really lucky to have one of his picks. All right, all right, I can hear you guys screaming at your screens from here. Shut up and pick the lock already, Tumble 3R. Well, I'm gonna pick the lock, but I have no intention of stopping my yammering. I'm apparently one of those guys who likes to hear himself talk. Before I get too far down this road, I should probably give a shout out to my friend Ken Nixon, who loaned me this Abloy Classic padlock. 
I knew I had the pick coming, and um, he was kind enough to loan this to me. Even though all the discs are lined up at the zero position after you pull the key out, uh, getting the picking head in is actually can actually be a little bit tricky because of the alignment of the uh, the spindles to the keyway. I'm probably really more worried about it than I need to be, but the picking tip is so thin, uh, I just am paranoid about damaging it. Obviously, the Abloy Classic is tensioned from the back. I believe there was a previous version uh, a long time ago that was tensioned from the front, but there was a picking attack that worked against it, so they changed it. Abloy's strategy with kind of all their locks is really to put enough stuff in your way down the keyway that you can't get tools in there. So the first order of business is to start kind of down at the bottom of the stack and work my way up getting everything into a gate. Once that happens, everything bites a little bit harder and the lock is much easier to read. Conceptually, picking these is just like any other lock that employs gates. You're just positioning the discs into gates uh, and testing to see if they're true or false by jiggling them. If the disc jiggles freely, yeah, you know you're on the right track, and if it grinds, you know you're not. Now I'm having to do quite a bit of counter-rotating on the tension in order to get myself out of false gates. Uh, for some reason, that is much more acute going clockwise than it is counterclockwise, and I'm not sure why that is. but. Again, I'm trying to be very careful with that picking tip, not to put too much pressure on it and damage it. I do find that I need to work my way up and down the stack more times than I'm used to. Um, discs that seem very free early on the process will bind later. So just revisiting them over and over again is kind of the ticket. So I guess it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Because seriously, an elephant in the room? I mean. Well, I guess technically it's an elephant in the garage. So I dusted all the cobwebs off my YouTube channel and looked at the last time I made a video. Turns out it was almost exactly a year ago. And in that year, a lot of you have reached out to me asking why in the heck I haven't been making any videos. And most of the time I just say something like, well, my interests are elsewhere, or I haven't been feeling like it, or something like that. But the truth is, it's a little more complicated. I mean, that's certainly part of the story, but it's not the whole thing. Believe it or not, YouTube is not my first internet publishing rodeo. I used to run a blog a long time ago, and I'd write technical articles, mostly for things I did at work. Anyway, I ran ads on those articles, and eventually came to depend on the money it generated. That translated into enormous pressure to publish content. Even content I didn't want to publish or particularly think was valuable. So when I decided to create this channel, I thought both about what I wanted it to be and what I didn't want it to be. Mostly what I wanted it to be was a channel that picks hard and interesting locks and pushes me to challenge myself. What I didn't want it to be was one of those YouTube channels that pumps out daily content that's easy to produce and really of dubious value. So really the reason I haven't been creating content is that I haven't had anything that I both had the energy to create and thought was worth sharing. I mean, I've got a job. I don't need the money. And frankly, I don't like the fact that Google or YouTube incentivizes quantity over quality. So this is me not participating. It's just me inviting you into my garage to share my hobby. That's really all I want it to be and all I've ever really wanted it to be. So I might not make videos every day or every week or even every month, but when I have something interesting to share or an interesting lock to pick that I've actually managed to figure out how to pick, I'll share it with you. And I'll try to do it in a way that's as interesting, fun, and entertaining as I can. So I don't want you to become a patron on Patreon. I mean, I don't even have Patreon. And I don't want you to have to watch ads. Just sit back and give me some moral support and send some good thoughts that I might actually be able to open this stupid lock sometime this month. So what's going on with the lock right now is I'm continuing to drop into different false gates and work my way up and down the stack, testing the other discs to see if they respond differently. If they are in a false gate, they may have jiggled freely a while ago, but as I move the other discs into true gates, they would become uh, kind of grindy or, or perhaps stiffly bound, you might say. In a similar way to when you're first putting the pick into the lock, the picking tip can sometimes not want to move past the different discs. All right, so Sorry to cut the video off just right there, but I don't want to make the entire video about uh, Tumblr picking this lock. I do highly recommend that you 
check him out and I'll put a link to his video so you can check him out. But I just want to say it was really cool that he came up and he was one of the channels I got to share this week. Now if anyone has any channels that they would like to share, um, feel free to share them. But I think I know what I might do next because this reminds me of another channel that I enjoyed um, but haven't, not that I recall has been too active. And I can bring that channel up right now. And this, let's see, let's see I'm just going to bring up the channel. And this is another guy that's a really great guy. And um, let's see. I am going to bring him up right here. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with MM Developer. He was another channel that does really great work. He's really, really good at picking um, locks in general, but he's particularly good at medical locks. And he hasn't been too active recently, but he has some pretty interesting content. Um, he did have a little viral video a little while back. I don't know if he still has it up or not, where he opened up a hotel door using a menu. But, you know, I hope everything is doing well with him, and it is really cool to see um, that he still has some of his videos up. He is a guy that kind of like deletes his stuff here and there. Um, so, I can click on just some random medical video. I'm not exactly sure what's what, but we'll see what we find. So now we have a Medico Classic by Axial. I uh, picked this up off of eBay. It was a pack of three for about $12 or something like that. i uh, been having some fun practicing with these things. So they're all six pin Medico by Axials. Uh, each one has at least two mushroom pins. And uh, we're gonna put it in this vise and uh, try to pick it open. Okay, and we're gonna pick this with top of the keyway tension. Uh, standard hook, and one or more biaxial picks. So first let's pick them to shear. Alright, pin six got to click out of. Overset pin six. Pin one, two, three, four, five. All right, gotta click out of pin five. Four. It's okay, it's way overset pin three here. Slight rotation out of the core when I got pin two. All right, got pin one. That was definitely a mushroom. All right, got pin five to shear and got a rotation out of the core. So let's let's try rotating them some here. So now I'm going to apply heavier tension and see which ones bind. Oddly enough, none of them bind, so it tells me that there's probably another mushroom in here. Okay, all of them are rotationally set, so we have another mushroom hiding in here. So let's go hunt for mushrooms. Pin 2 feels a little bit different than everybody else. 
So I'm thinking pin 2 must be in a false gate here. There it is. All right, so that was a really great job on him getting that lock open. Those are not easy locks by any means. And I just want to say that that was really cool to share. So I just want to say that I was pretty happy to bring up MM Developer's channel so you could check him out. I'm going to bring him up on the screen one more time so you can check out his channel. So let me bring up MM Developer right now. And if you enjoyed any of the content you saw by MM Developer or Tumblr, please consider hitting that subscription button. They might not be making videos, but it is always a really nice thing to be able to do to share your support. But I just want to say that this is really all I have for you this week. I think sharing these two channels were pretty cool. They were a little bit longer in the videos, so I hope that you found the content valuable. It was really nice being able to see Tumblr using his silver bullet and kind of giving a little bit of information on how to even utilize the tool, which was pretty cool. But definitely check out those two channels. They definitely have a lot of great information and it's a lot of high yield content. But that's really all I have for you this week. I just want to say thank you to everyone that was able to make it. I know this was not my typical day, but I do like to try to get them in if possible. But I just want to say thank you again to everyone that was able to check out this week's Locksport update. It's a really fun thing to do, and I just want to say thank you again to everyone that was able to make it. And if you guys have any questions or suggestions, as always, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing. Every subscription makes such a big difference, whether it be to me or to any of the channels I shared or just to any of the channels out there in Locksport. It's really cool to see this really great community continuing to thrive and just become a really great place to be. I just want to say thank you to everyone. I hope everyone has a great weekend and stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.